and welcome to Lake Point Church. We are so glad you could be here. Let's stand. We're going to worship to our God and our King. We're going to start the service out the right way. Our work creation. Here we go. So we're creation. Suddenly I'll take you in. With a thousand tongues to lift one cry. Then from north to south and east to west, we'd hear cries be magnified. We're the whole.
what he's doing All my fears and doubts Yeah, they can all come to Because they can't stay alone When I'm here with you It's a new horizon And I'm set on you
temptation comes my way When I cannot stand, I'll fall on you Yes, I will Cause Jesus, you're my hope and stay So when I cannot stand, I'll fall on you He's our solid rock Oh, Jesus, you're my hope and stay right now raise your hand okay now one more time do you expect God to move in this service today when you come to the right place you come to the right place you guys be seated welcome to Lake Point Church whether you're here live or watching online or watching later a lot of places to watch and and we're just so delighted that you could be a part of what what God is doing here at Lake Point Church and and uh, be a part of uh, what the message that we're, God is going to give us today and the word. Maybe the Lord has already spoken to you. Maybe the Holy Spirit has knocked on the heart of, uh, of the door of your heart during the message today. And I, if not, then I hope it will uh, happen uh, later on in the, uh, in the message, in the worship. And just know this, God wants to uh, speak to you. Uh, for those who want to connect with our church, we invite you to um, uh, reach out and grab a connection card in the seat pocket in front of you. You could turn that into the offering box box in the back. And for those who are watching online, you simply go to lakepointonline.com forward slash guest. And then that will, um, uh, that'll get you to our online form. And someone asked me this week, what is a forward slash? Well, forward slash is, you know, basically not a line that goes straight, but leans forward. Okay. And I don't know where that is on your little keypad, on your, on your device, your computer or your phone, you know, but it's lakepointonline.com forward slash guest. And then um, and it'll pull up that form. And please fill that out. Let us know a record of your attendance. You can fill out some prayer requests and all kinds of things with that. A few things going on in the life of our church. Uh, we have our high school and middle school students are had their summer kickoff um, at Lake Point, um, uh, here at Lake Point Sports here at the Aqua Park. And this obstacle, uh, this obstacle course here at, uh, at Terminus Wake Park is $20. And that will cover your... Uh, all of your stuff for the park and then also uh, food. So that is this coming Wednesday. You don't want to miss that. You can go to our events page on lakepointonline.com. Go to events and you can sign up. We've already had uh, several students that have already registered for that. So that is this coming uh, Wednesday. And uh, and then we also have our graduate uh, recognition Sunday. It's going to be next Sunday, May 29th. And so all of our graduating seniors will be up here. We will send them off uh, with some prayers and love and support and so you don't want to miss that next Sunday uh, graduate Sunday and then for those who um, want to join Lake Point Church we've had a lot of people interested in this if you want to be a part of Lake Point Church even if you just want to find out information about Lake Point Church uh, there's no pressure for you to join but that new member class uh, will be the first Sunday in June so that'll be June 5th here in a couple weeks you can sign up uh, by uh, simply going to our website and then forward slash member and you'll go to the forum just let us know you're coming or let us know a connection point we'd love for uh, you guys to let us know hey uh, at this time let's all stand and greet those around us all right if you guys make your way back to your seats love this great time of fellowship that we have 
Um, I wanted to give you a quick update regarding our ministry center for those who uh, probably know by now, whether you've been watching online or following us on Facebook or whatever. But uh, the ministry center is, um, is one step closer to us being able to occupy it. And uh, for those who don't know, our, our address is going to be changing. Now, on Sundays, we're going to stay here. But everything outside of Sundays, so Monday through Saturday, special events, our youth gatherings, ladies' Bible study, lots of things, will be at 106 4th Street. And eventually, that's going to be our mailing address. 106 4th Street. It's right over here uh, off of 4th Street here in Emerson. And uh, we have a building there. It's on our 20 acres. And this past week, they were able to put in the framework for the drop ceiling. And uh, this week, they're going to finish that. This week, they're going to finish all the indoor lighting and uh, start laying down the wood flooring and also building the, out, uh, the decking um, for, uh, for the, uh, the building on the outside. So that starts on Tuesday. And the next week, uh, they start with the drive entrance and the parking. And then after that, we're, we're kind of there. So um, put this date on your calendar. It's July 10th, and that is a Sunday night. Uh, we're going to have a, a dedication ceremony for the ministry center on that Sunday night. And uh, it's going to be a potluck dinner. And we're also going to have a baptism service there on our land. And it'll just be a great time of fellowship. So Sunday, July 10th, you don't want to miss that uh, as we um, just give glory to God for all that he's done and provided. Now, I'll tell you what, this building... Uh, and I'll tell you more of the story of the ceremony um, on July 10th. But this building has gone through a process. And the Lord has taught uh, me and several um, of our leaders and, and our church, really, a lot of patience that God is in control. But this building is beautiful. It looks brand new. It's been painted on the outside and the inside. And I just cannot wait for us to start using that. So, uh, but your, uh, your giving goes to things like that. And so with this ministry center, we are going to be uh, doing stuff like, uh, obviously, a lot of outreach, uh, food pantry, and um, BBSs, and those kinds of things. And so, um, your, your contributions go towards that. Speaking of the contributions, uh, if you want to give to the life of our church, uh, you can simply go to lakepointonline.com, go to give. For those who are here today, you can fill out an offering envelope on the back uh, seat pocket in front of you and uh, put that in the offering box in the back. And I, I know most of us uh, give online. And, uh, but anyway, you want to give, that's great. More importantly is that you uh, just trust in the Lord, have faith in the Lord. He's going to meet your needs. He's going to supply. Uh, the needs. And just know that the giving, you don't give just to, just to support um, the, the church. I mean, God is, God is going to take care of his church 100%. You give actually because of you. I give because of me. Because what it does, it helps us grow in our faith and helps us to trust in the Lord and depend upon him. When money's tight, when it doesn't seem like things are going to go far enough, even though you give, it's a step of faith. It doesn't make sense in our financial minds, but in God's economy, it makes perfect sense. And so I just want to encourage you to continue to give uh, no matter what is happening in your life. Let's uh, ask the Lord to bless our offering. Heavenly Father, we come before you. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we can give towards you. Father, you showed us your heart of generosity by giving us your son, Jesus. And so, Lord, we, um, we just want to do uh, the same. We want to follow your heart of generosity, and we want to give just a small portion of what you've given to us. And we ask you, Lord, that you take this offering, you bless it to magnify your kingdom and help us, Lord, to walk um, in trust and faith in you and contentment of what you've given to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we are in our week four of this series called 40 Days with Jesus. And the reason why we're doing this series is because many times uh, we, we as church, as a church, and many churches do this, they focus so much on Easter, Easter, Easter. And then after Easter, hey, he's risen. Great. And then we go on with our daily lives and we just kind of keep, um, you know, maybe go to a different series or whatever. And that's great and all, but I just felt impressed with the Holy Spirit as we were leading towards Easter. It's like, what happens after Easter? Okay? He didn't just go straight home. He hangs out for about 40 days. 
and he's on this earth. And what does he do? Who does he talk to? Why is that important? This is what we're doing in this series. And, um, and you can have a, a personal devotional with this. If you can go to lakepointonline.com forward slash, we learned what that is today, forward slash 40 days, the number four zero days, you can pull up a personal devotional that goes right along with this series. And now tomorrow's devotional will be posted tomorrow morning. But each week, every week, we release the new devotional. And it's simple, uh, something, it's something simple that you can just put on your phone and, uh, and you can have it on your computer, your tablet, or whatever. Uh, it's not something we're printing out, but uh, you can pretty much take it with you. So I encourage you to go ahead and, um, and, and use that devotional, lakepointonline.com forward slash 40 days. Week one, that transform is called about the transformation, the life encounter uh, uh, with Jesus and Mary Magdalene. As soon as he rose from the dead, the first person he was in contact with was Mary Magdalene. And she, um, uh, she was startled by his presence. When she finally realized who it was, uh, Jesus said her name. And so just the fact that God saying our name, Jesus saying our name, knowing that he is with us, it helps us to recognize him. Week two, it was an eye-opening journey. It was a walk to Emmaus as Jesus was walking with a couple of his disciples. They, they didn't recognize him. They had some blurred vision. And, um, but Jesus opened their eyes. He corrected their visioning, vision by opening scripture, by telling them what the prophets had foretold about what his life was going to be. And then also, uh, they, their eyes were open when they invited them in and hung out with them. And he broke bread and they saw the, the scars in his hands. And they recognized that it was Christ. Last week, we talked about when Jesus entered the, enters the room. When Jesus enters the room, things happened. Things happen when Jesus enters the room. When the Holy Spirit enters the room, we should be changed. We talked about when Jesus entered the room with the disciples, with the 11. Their lives are changed. He brought peace to them. He wasn't rebuking them for uh, running away in the garden. He, that wasn't his approach. He's like, look, guys, I, I come in peace. Peace be with you. He said it twice in that passage. And so what it does, it calms us down. It makes us to connect with him, and it helps us to understand that he is all about changing us. And then once we are changed, guess what we can do? We can go and change the world. Sometimes we get that backwards. To be quite honest, a lot of times we get that backwards. We feel like, I want to change the world. I want to make a difference. I want to tell others about, um, about what, what, you know, what God is and what Jesus is and, and, and what he can do. And that's great and all. But it starts with letting Jesus change you. Letting Jesus coming into the room of your heart and in the room of your, of your life. And that is a decision that we make every day. Now, we, we make a one-time decision to invite Jesus as Lord and Savior of our life. But there's an everyday decision. There's an everyday is different. We have to have that choice. Jesus, I'm going to invite you into my day. Come into the room of my life. Come into the room of my calendar and my heart and let, and please change me. And then I can change others. And so when Jesus enters, enters a room, things happen. Today, we're going to look at a subject simply called overcoming failure. This is another encounter with Jesus in the 40 days. All of us struggle in life and have failed in various ways. Some of you are still living in, in, in sort of the consequences of, of failure. And you, you could be, you wondered whether you can ever live life beyond this sort of failure if you, if you have a future. Well, there's, there's some great news I want to share with you today. The future, your future is greater than your failure. Your future is greater than your failure. And the second thing is that the call is greater than your fall. Your calling to live for Christ, to follow him, is greater than the fall. We're going to go and study an example of overcoming failure. And the man's name that Jesus encountered is Simon Peter, one of Jesus' closest disciples. He displayed a particular proficiency for saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. That was, that was Peter. That was his that was sort of his life. 
He's kind of a rough and gruff and fisherman. But his life reached a very low point when he denied Jesus three times. Yet, within a couple of months, he was boldly preaching Jesus on the day of Pentecost, where 3,000 or more came to Christ and became one of the greatest leaders in the history of the church. What made the difference? How can Peter go from epic failure to leading 3,000 people in Christ and, and being one of the, the strongest leaders of the church? It was an encounter with Jesus. It was a Jesus encounter. Now, we're going to read about this encounter in John chapter 21. If you have your copy of God's Word, your, your written copy of God's Word or your digital copy of God's Word, uh, if you don't have that, we're going to have it on the screens. But we're going to be in John chapter 21. John is in the New Testament, and it's a fourth the book there in the New Testament. And so, as we read through a little bit of this, we're going to start reading with verses 1 through 3. And just follow along with me, John chapter 21. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana and uh, Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, which is James and John, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught Nothing. So here you have Jesus is risen and the mission is over. What are we going to do now? Well, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go fishing. Now Jesus did say in an earlier encounter, look, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna meet with you again. So maybe they went fishing just to sort of buy time, maybe get get a little bit of money. But we do know this that they went fishing. Now, Peter is often criticized for going fishing here. He's not running from God. There's not a sense of that. Um, but we do know that he has this big F on his forehead, and that is failure. I failed Jesus. Yet, in spite of doing what he was trained to do, him and the disciples uh, of, of fishermen, despite of doing what he was trained to do in fishing when they should be fishing, which was at night, they still caught nothing. They were now facing just simple little struggles. So imagine these guys. They're in a boat, maybe a couple of boats, and they're out all night and they're fishing and they caught nothing. Now, that is my kind of fishing. When I fish... I catch nothing. It's just fish run away from me, okay? My, my father-in-law is here. I've been fishing with him before. He's never seen me reel in a fish, okay? The only thing I've done is get the net to bring the fish into the boat that he's caught. But we often have those small little struggles and frustrations in life. Now, to alleviate the frustrations of fishing, I just don't go fishing anymore. But I do have other struggles and other frustrations just like you. And so the little frustrations in life, just like the this, this disciples, they were out all night and they didn't catch a fish even though they were very trained at this. And so um, let's read on to, to verse 4. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus was right there waiting to help them in their daily struggles. Jesus wants to do the same for us. So what I want you to realize is this. God is in the small things. He loves the small things, the little things, and the little struggles. And it's okay for you to sort of bother God with the little things. God actually likes that. Think about your relationship with your kids. When your kids are little, it doesn't matter what age. But if they have these little bitty things that is important, then you just, you like to be involved in that. You, you like to be drawn into that. This, this week, uh, our, uh, our, our ninth grader, Lincoln, 
he got out some of my tools, and which is a little scary. But he um, he got some tools out and broke apart a swing set, an old swing set, and got some chains and had a cardboard and and so um, he used um, he used one of his uh, BB guns and 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 he made a target. And it was sort of this floating target in between trees. And I walked out there and just see, hey, how you do, what are you doing? And he, said, he explained to me what he was doing and, and everything. And it was a nice little moment there with Lincoln and I because I asked him what he was doing. And it was important to him. And because it's important to him, it's important to me. And, um, and so just the little things, God likes to be involved in the little things. And even especially in the little frustrations and struggles in your life. So how do the disciples show us to respond to this? What do the disciples do in the midst of this simple little struggle, this frustration? That fish in three years, they're coming back. We're going to catch a lot of fish. Nothing. What do they show us? Well, first of all, they welcome Jesus' intervention. They welcome the intervention of Jesus. Notice Jesus clearly takes the initiative. As we see in verse 5, he calls out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. Now, notice, too, his heart for the disciples, he literally addresses them as friends, not as, hey, guys, I, re- I remember I was in the garden and you ran away. I was hanging on the cross and only one of you were there, and you left me by myself. He, that wasn't his approach. He addressed them as friends. Jesus uses this great term of, of endearment and affection and reveals the Father heart of God for us and for them. And he's showing us. And that is a God who uh, who wants to come close to us and help make life work. He just wants to be involved in the little things. But notice the disciples. They They don't seem to resent this question or this intrusion as an insult. They don't try to deny or hide their problem. They don't say... Like we always do. No, we're fine. We are just fine. No problems there. There's no suggestion throughout the rest of this passage that the disciples resent his intervention, however awkward it may be. And so if you want Jesus to help you in your present struggles, you must welcome his intervention. Do you know that God is always trying to to provide some intervention in your life. In the little things, God is always working around you. You just got to look. He's always trying to intervene into those, uh, those little things and, of course, the big things. So you've got to welcome his, invita- his intervention and don't say, you know, God, I-, I got this. I'm fine. I've done that a few times in my life and it didn't go well. So, Jesus wants to help us in our present struggle. The disciples show us to welcome his intervention. The second thing we see is to obey his instruction. We see this in verse 6. He, Jesus said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. The creator has all the knowledge and power that we will ever need. He knows more about the fish than the fishermen. He knows more about, the, uh, than, uh, about money than the accountant. He knows more about business than the entrepreneur. He knows more about parenting than the parents. More about teaching than teachers. More about life and more about reaching people than we do. Could it be that... We don't feel like God is helping us because we're not obeying his simple instruction. It could be something, a struggle or a frustration in your life 
and, and God is intervening, and, he, and he's telling you something. Now, it could be something you read in God's word. It could be something that, he, that the Holy Spirit speaks to you. It could be from another person because God speaks through people, especially the church. He speaks through circumstances. And so God is always intervening, and, and through that intervention, he's telling you, hey, make this slight adjustment. Just, just the other side of the boat. Just pull the net and go to the other side. It's just simple. I'm not asking you to go across the lake. I'm not asking you to go at, just, just the other side of the boat. And, and I've tried that before fishing. I've tried this side. And I've tried this side, and it's still not fishing, you know. But, but know this, God knows how to help you in your struggles and your frustrations. Many times we don't feel that because we don't obey what God is telling us to do. So I want to encourage you. That's what the disciples did. They obeyed. And then the third thing we see from the disciples is they accept his invitation. They accept his in invitation. Jesus performed this miracle because it was his way of inviting the disciples and especially Peter into a renewed relationship with himself. The purpose of a miracle is to point to the miracle worker. And when we, when we recognize the miracle worker, there's an invitation to a closer walk with him. Miracles lead to recognition. Miracles lead to recognition. The reason why God wants to move in your life, intervention, hey, make this adjustment. We obey. Then things happen in our life. Things move. Mountains move. Obstacles are cleared. Somehow money lines up in the bank or, or, or people help you. Whatever. And through that sort of miracle, however big or small that may be, it doesn't matter that, that whatever that miracle is, know this, that that miracle, the purpose of that miracle is to draw you closer to Jesus. A closer walk with Jesus. That is the purpose of the miracle. But you can't get to the miracle without obeying what he wants you to do. What he wants you to do. Now, you're probably thinking of a lot of different scenarios in your life. Hopefully, that, that you can plug this in. Maybe there's some thing that's happening and, and you're just struggling. And you're looking for an intervention. You're praying. God wants to do that. He's speaking. Make this adjustment. Do this. And I know it doesn't make sense. That's one reason why, why, giving, why, why giving tithes just doesn't make sense a lot of times. God may say, okay, if, if you want contentment in your life and you, and you want to make sure I can meet your needs, just I need you to show that you could trust me. Give 10%. Give a tithe. And to us, it doesn't make sense. It's like, but God, I've got these bills. I know that. God, I, just, I don't have the, the money to take care of what I got. I know that tithe. But God, we just tried this side of the boat. You want us to go to this side of the boat? That doesn't make sense. That didn't make sense at all. The fish, it's the same water. It doesn't make sense. But, all right. I'll do it. All right. God, I'll tithe. All right. I'll start attending church. All right. I'll start reading your word. All right. I'll start praying for people. I'll spend the time in prayer. Miracles lead to recognition. In John, uh, in uh, same chapter, John 21, 7 and 8. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved, that's John, said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, uh, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. As we recognize the hand of God moving in a small miracle of lives, it should cause us to run or swim towards Jesus. It should cause us to do whatever it takes to get to Jesus. Simon Peter didn't wait for the boat to get to the shore. 
I can't wait. I need to see Jesus now. I need to see Jesus right now. And it's interesting. Know what Simon Peter has. Remember, failure. That's what we're talking about today. Overcoming failure. If I were Simon Peter, I would have jumped out of the boat and started swimming to the other side. (laughs) Away from Jesus. Don't you do that sometimes? If, if, there's, if there's something you've done and, and something, some sort of failure in your life, you're like, oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I can't face that. No, 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 no. But Jesus is on the shore with a fire waiting for you. So run to him, whatever it takes. You know, this picture of Peter, it's, it's a wonderful picture for us. No matter what we've done, are not done, we can have freedom and confidence to run to him and not from him. From recognition, there comes the invitation to a deeper relationship. Jesus is cooking, and he invites them to bring some of the fish. We see this in verses 9 through 11. When they landed, they saw a fire burning coals there with the fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the nets ashore. It was full of large fish, 153 But even with so many, the net was not torn. Here is Jesus still wanting to serve his disciples and also serve us. The meal and the fire was a sign of great friendship and fellowship, which also speaks to the Lord's desire to meet our practical needs. See, we're going back to this sort of practical needs. But God, I I can't meet this need. I can't do this. This is a struggle. This is a frustration. I know. I know. I do have the power to move mountains. But guess what? I can also have the power to help you climb them. God is there with you. It doesn't matter how little the struggle is. So, Jesus shows us. He wants to be present in our daily struggles and our frustrations. And he does, and and the disciples show us how to respond. Welcome the intervention. Don't don't say, God, I got this, or or, or don't ignore what God could be speaking in his word or through other people. Welcome his intervention. And then simply obey. If you read something in here that God wants you to obey, just simply obey it, even when it doesn't make sense. And then accept his invitation to the fire, to the campfire. Accept his invitation for you to go do do whatever it takes to get there. So not only does Jesus help us in our present struggles, but he also heals us from our past failures. He heals us from our past failures. So two big sort of points here in today's message about our failures. Number one, He wants to help us in our daily struggles, our daily failures, the simple things. But he also wants to heal us from the big past failures, the big struggles in our life that we still live with. And there are some big failures that we can all face, that we all bring in. We see this encounter, same chapter, verses 15 through 17. But when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Now, by this time, Peter was a little hurt. He was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, You know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. There are a few interesting elements that happens in this sort of interchange between Jesus and Simon Peter. First, Jesus had cooked the fish on a fire of burning coals. Now, burning coals is a very important couple of words in this passage. 
The little translation is charcoal fire. Do you know the only place in Scripture in the New Testament that the word charcoal fire or burning coals appears in the original language? The only place it happens in all of the New Testament, it's in John chapter 18, verses 18. And it's when Peter was warming himself by the fire when he denied Jesus. Imagine Simon Peter, they finish the fish, they're warming themselves around the charcoal fire. And I can only imagine that the flashback of failure, the flashback, something that triggers him. Do things trigger you as well? A failure? You see someone or you watch something on TV or, or, or someone mentions something in a conversation or even you smell a certain scent. Whatever it is. Or go to a place and you're reminded failure. This is where Simon Peter was. But it's interesting that Jesus in that same sort of charcoal fire he's inviting Peter to. The second thing we see in this passage in this conversation is that Jesus deliberately addresses him as Simon, son of John. Not Peter, the rock. Because as you may recall, Simon is his original name. Simon, Simon, son of John. But Jesus changed his name to Peter. Peter, because of your revelation that I am the son of God, I'm going to build my kingdom on that revelation, on the rock. And so because of that, your name is now Peter, the rock. But in this conversation, no, you're Simon. You're Simon. Not Peter, the rock. This highlighted Peter's failure and to live up to the name and to his need for restoration. Now, you may be thinking, well, that's really, really awful for Jesus. No, we're getting there. He's got a plan. And then third, in this conversation, Jesus deliberately asked Peter the same basic question three times. Reflecting that Peter had denied him three times. By the third time, this is why Peter was hurt. He said Peter was hurt. Not just because he was asking a question, because he was like, All right, I get it. You're asking three times because I denied you three times. Flashback. Flashback. Fire. My original name, Simon, not the rock. And now this. So what's happening here? What is happening in this conversation? Jesus is coming to Peter to heal him from his past failure. Now make sure you guys don't don't miss this. In doing so, Jesus is deliberately reminding him of his denial, not to make him feel bad, but to bring him to a place of repentance, restoration, and recommissioning. Why? Does he have to face him up to to the past? Why does he, why did Jesus have to face him up to the past? Because he wants Peter to own the problem. He wants Peter to own the problem. He doesn't want Peter to carry this problem into his future, to hide it, to tuck it away. Oh boy, don't we do this? Don't we do this so well in our failures? We sort of take this and hide this away in our past, our past sins or something we may have done with someone and we just sort of tuck it away. We don't deal with it and we bring it into our future and future relationships and other things and it causes a big mess. Jesus knows he's going to use Peter to do an incredible work in his kingdom. And he's like, hmm, Peter, we've, we've got to deal with this. We've got to deal with this. It's not, hey, buddy, no problem. No, no, no worries. It's like, no, Peter, here's a fire, charcoal fire. Remember that last charcoal fire you were at? Simon? Simon, right? It's Simon, yeah. And, I mean, do you really love me? Do you really love me? I mean, imagine if my wife were to ask me, 
Three times in a row. Do you love me? It's like, well, yes. What, what else do I have to do? Jesus is basically telling Simon, Peter, look, dude, we, we've got to deal with this. We've got to deal with this. And boy, he's telling us the same thing. He wants him to own up to the problem. He doesn't want him to carry it into the future. But notice what Jesus doesn't do in this situation. He doesn't come in to say, now, Peter, you remember how you denied me? Of course, Peter remembers, and the shame of it would have, would have dogged him for the rest of his life. Instead, Jesus goes to the root of the problem and asks, do you love me? Jesus is highlighting that the heart of the matter is a matter of the heart. The heart of the matter, the very simple core of the matter, is the matter of the heart. And so, Jesus is saying, Peter, the reason you denied me is a love issue. You loved yourself, your reputation, what others thought of you more than you loved me. It is a problem that is right in the root of mankind's sinful condition of our own lives. Somewhere at the root of our greatest failures is a failure to fulfill the great commandment. To love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Peter, having faced up to his sin and having reaffirmed his love for Jesus, is recommissioned. And through this, we see a wonderful aspect of God's character. And that is the God of second chances. Oh, don't we love that? The God of second chances. Peter went on and, helped, and, and did amazing things for the church. Even today, 2,000 years on. He is honored along with the Apostle Paul as being the greatest and most significant founding leader of the church to which we belong. It's okay to, just, to, to come alongside your failure. Do, don't try to hide it. Let you and God deal with that. And let it be displayed. Because I believe, even in the midst of failure, our lives can be a masterpiece. Our lives can be a masterpiece. You know, when painters paint something that's a wonderful work of art, and sometimes they'll, they'll <clears throat> paint several copies of that, but it's still coming from the artist. But can I tell you the painting, the masterpiece that ends up being worth more than the other ones? It's the one with the flaw. It's the one with the flaw. That one little brushstroke that got out of hand. And it's different from all the other ones. The one with the failure in it. Is worth more because it's different. God doesn't want to display your failure for all the world to see by itself. He wants to incorporate what you're learning in the failure and to use that to do incredible things. Peter was able to do amazing things. Why? Because of the encounter with Jesus. And Jesus said, you know what? I can't go to heaven right now i got to spend time with Peter. I've got to make sure we deal with this. And so God, God just wants to deal with those things in our life that we have tucked away. But God also wants to be involved in the simple little things in our lives. He wants to be involved in those simple things so that we can... we can welcome the intervention in our life and we can obey him and then we can accept the invitation to walk with him closer 
because of the miracles he's doing in our life. He wants to be involved in those little struggles in our day, in our little failures, but also in the huge failures that we're trying to sort of hide. He said, hey, stop hiding that. Let's deal with that. Let's deal with that. Jesus has a campfire, and he's waiting for you to come. He's waiting for you to just gather around, be warm, be warmed by the fire, fellowship with him, and he just, he just wants you to get to know him and to walk with him. So would you do that? Could you do that today? Every head bowed, every eye closed in this moment. I just feel like the Holy Spirit wants to do some a great work, as always. But I, I feel as though that, that there could be some people here today, you're just going through some stuff. It, might, it may not seem such a big thing to other people, but to you, it is a big thing. Financial issues, job issues, relationship issues, whatever it is. And you think you, you can sort of manhandle it and do it on your own and, and fix it. But, but, but Jesus is saying, look, I, I, I want to be involved in this. So let me be involved. Throw the net on the other side. Just let me be involved. Because God knows how to pull you out of that. But I also think there's people here today or watching online there's some, big, there's some big failures. There's some big things you just need to lay at the foot of the cross. Or maybe you feel burdened for someone close to you who has, who has that failure. Don't hide it any longer. Don't hide it any longer. Come to the altar and let God warm you by the campfire of his love, his peace, his holiness. Allow him to do that. Would you do that? Would you do that? Heavenly Father, we come before you. Lord, search our hearts. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place. We invite you to move in our midst here today. We give you full reign and full freedom. So we ask you, Holy Spirit, do your work. And I know it's hurtful sometimes to revisit those things in the past, like Peter was hurt. But we, we've got to walk through that, but we are not going to do it alone. Jesus, you're there. But we, we've got to do that before we can do other bigger things for you. So help us, Lord, with that. In Jesus' name, amen. Logan and Madison are going to lead you just a simple song. You know what it is. And uh, feel free in just a moment. We're going to stand. You can sing. But I, I want, to know, want you to know this altar is open. I'm going to be down here. And just come and pray. And just say, Lord, I'm going through some stuff. Or I, I buried some stuff. And <laughs> we, need to, we need to walk through that. Would you? Okay. Just trust in him. Trust and obey because there's no other way. Let's stand together. Let's sing. And let's allow the Holy Spirit to do work. Faithful 
matter what's happening in our lives or we're going to sing of your goodness does it matter what the doctors are saying what report is there what tragedy happens struggles financially relationally Lord we're going to sing of your goodness even though it's difficult we're going to walk in obedience Lord let us experience you and Lord even in our moments of failure Lord, you're there to heal us, to provide healing. Thank you, Jesus. You, you didn't have to do that with Simon Peter. And you didn't have to make sure that was in the God's word, but we're grateful for that. We're so grateful for that. In your holy and precious name, we come before you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.